We're all set? All right, yep. Okay, uh, we'll begin the Protection and Welfare Committee meeting for uh, May 7th, 2018. It is 5.30, we're in room 207. Uh, roll call, uh, Alder Stevens. Here. Alder Vanderleest. Alder Stoyer. Here. And myself, Alder Scannell. Uh, we are all present. Uh, I'll take a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Um, Alder, oh. Alder Scannell, I'm sorry. Um, can we pause for a second? Sure. I, I need to be able to call out the agenda item so that oh. I'm setting it current in the minutes. Okay. So one, one second. <laughs> Okay. So we just we just moved on from uh, roll call. Okay. Um, now we are on approval of the agenda. Approval of the agenda. All right. Approval of the agenda for the May seventh, two thousand eighteen, protection and welfare meeting. And we had a motion by, by Alder Stoyer. Okay. Seconded by Alder Van de Liest. All right, and I can start the vote. Or we can do a, a voice vote on this one. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We have an agenda. Next item is the approval of the minutes of the April 23rd, 2018 Protection and Welfare Committee meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Yes. Second. Our motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Stevens. <laughs> Seconded by Alder Vander Liest. Uh, well, yeah, that's are we, we? Voice vote. Oh, yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. We, we have our minutes to approve it. <coughs> Regular business. So our first item is consideration with possible action on a request by Alder, Alder Stoyer to revisit uh, Green Bay Municipal Code 8.06 as it pertains to the length of dog leashes as to a workable solution. Well, I think we should begin with Alder Stoyer here. I, oh, okay. I didn't know there was an issue here. What's the... Uh, well, well, let's, we'll find out. Yep. But uh, it was actually brought up by one of my... One of the citizens in my district, Bob Harrell, who is in the audience, who I would like to have speak when, when the time comes. Okay. And I've had um, citizens call in at times talking about these retractable leashes uh, that are somewhat unsafe a little bit if they come back. Uh, uh, talked also about homes that where folks have a very small front yard, dogs will be walking owner and the dog will be walking on the sidewalk and the next thing you know the dog's almost up on the porch and always oh, a nice dog well fine but you know there there's some issue with that as well so I uh, also had a ch uh, chance to talk to officer Mavis uh, our animal control officer and she went at length on a few things as well so I thought you know what I think we need to discuss this and just find out if there's other ways better ways to uh, to deal with that, you know, some some communities have longer leashes, some have shorter, uh, what have you. And I, I like, you know, sometimes you talk to six se six feet, seven feet. I mean, there's a number of different things that come forward. So I'm going to rely on Officer Mavis to talk about that. But I'd also like to have uh, uh, Mr. Harrell speak as well as well as anybody else I would like to. Okay, well, let me start with Officer Mavis. Let's keep it with staff first. No, 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 not with not with staff. Okay. Staff. Don't want to do Hi. Yep. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, I know I spoke with Alderman Stoyer. We we often have quite a few complaints on this in the city. Uh, some of our biggest issues are that people just don't leash their animals. Period. Um, and I think you know if we can try to get it across that all animals be leashed. Um, some people, if you read our ordinance, it says that we have a leash law. Um, but then when you read further on. Basically it's says or means that are you know efficient and effective to control your animal. Yeah. Some of that would uh, fall under um, like an electric fence, an electric shock collar, that sort of thing. Um, I believe that leashes that are six feet uh, or less in length um, are efficient. And if you look at our city, we have a five foot public right of way restriction. Um, you know, honestly, five or six feet as far as le leash length, I think, is appropriate. Um, you know, the city owns five feet onto property anyways in the city, um, so that would basically be a buffer. You know, some of these people, like he said, have these retractable leashes. They're junk. Um, you have a big dog on one of those, they snap, they break. Um, they're also unsafe because if a dog's on one and some kid's walking by, they wrap around the kid's leg, they <coughs> can cause quite a bit of damage. Um, actually cut off the circulation, uh, people have to go to the hospital for that sort of thing. Um, and again, like he said, you know, they can extend very far. There's all different ones. They can be up on someone's porch. 
Now, what if someone has their dog tied up there? Now we've got a dog bite. Now an animal to animal bite doesn't result in you know us having to do a, a state order quarantine, but now we have someone who potentially their own dog got injured on their own property from a dog that was not properly leashed or under control. Um, those are concerns that I have. I was going to ask how many during the course of the year how many calls do you get on things like this? You know, let's say unleash or unleash dogs. I would have to say it's our number one call. I would have to. I'm still trying to find a, an exact uh, number, number yeah, um, it but varies. it's our number one call. Um, constantly. I, I've had some today. Uh, a gentleman called me today. He's every, for the last seven years, he runs past an address and this dog just now started running out after him and his dog and he's minding his own business and and we have that five foot right away restriction in that leash law to keep people safe. You know, we don't want parents who are pushing along their kids in a stroller to feel not safe in their neighborhood like some dog's going to come right out and chomp that kid's face. It's a safety concern. There's a buffer, and I think the public is not aware of that, and I'm trying to educate the public and get that out there that, hey, we do have a five-foot right-of-way restriction, we do have a leash law, and you need to be in control of your animal. You cannot just run loose and kind of supervise it. That's not okay. Right. So our ordinance right now, what is, what does it call for? I mean, uh, basically, just an, uh, it's a leash law, animal yeah. running out large law. It has to be no, leashed. No there's length. no restrictions, I yes. See. And if you read further, right. it specifically states Sufficient control. means, right. yeah. <laughs> right. But that's Which is vague. Left to interpretation. Correct. So you're suggesting we put a foot length to it? Well. I'm, I'm okay with that. <coughs> um, I, you know, the, um, the, I guess the idea came up to me, and there are many, uh, many municipalities that do that. Um, it's really big in California um, and bigger cities, obviously, for that concern. Um, I just would like to get people more compliant with actually just even leashing them. Not even a leash length, but just getting them leashed. Because I have so many attacks that happen because an animal is off leash. Um, so, what uh, action would you like to, us to? What, what would you like to see happen with the six feet or less? Uh, all animals leashed. Anything else? <coughs> no. Well, that's a start. No, well, 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 it is. But I, I right. I'm not saying. But if there's more, we can right, do it right now. Do you want we don't me have to, to start. discuss the no, parts? I, well, I was, I just wanted to ask one other thing. I mean, we were talking about folks uh, with unleashed dogs, but let's say in parks, you know, Correct. and I, I know it's not totally related to this item, but indirectly somewhat. So I, we've had issues with that too, where folks just let, you know, the dogs run in the parks and I've talked to parks about that and they're saying, well, it's hard to enforce. You have to call it in and, you know, with the police and that too, you know, it's probably not high on their priority list, but I think it's still, still an issue. Still yeah. an issue. Um, so we have an, another ordinance, no animal per, uh, permitted in a city park unless it's a dog and it's leashed and on a pathway. Now I personally, just uh, two weekends ago, took my kid to McAuliffe Park just to play. A gentleman um, opened up his door, two dogs came running over and one of them was a chihuahua went crazy by my three-year-old son. And he's like, oh they're nice, and I'm like, I picked my kid up. Every animal is capable of biting. It is an animal. They act on instincts. You know what I'm saying? And yes. I don't know if it's vaccinated, and it needs to be leashed. And what if your child's allergic to a dog? How are you going to explain that? Um, I, I, I take this very seriously because I'm very passionate in what I deal with, and the public safety is important to me. You know, whether it's your own kid or someone else's kid or just anyone else or your own animal for that matter. Right. You know, and a lot of times the parks department, they don't have proper signage. I went and walked that whole park. I did not find any <coughs> signs. You know, I asked about that too. If I can, if I can chime in, um, some folks said, "Well, you won't read signs." You know, the signs are up, and people don't pay attention anyhow. But if there is, are no signs, you have no excuse. I think there Correct. should be something, and that's another issue. We'll have to deal with that. Right. You walk into a state park; they've got plenty of signs right when you enter in. And that the thing is, is people have phones nowadays everywhere. It makes it easier to call in on any kind of complaint. Snap a photograph of uh, the vehicle that came with the animals. I will be sure to follow up on it. Where would you put the signs on a large park? Now I know that's another, you know, a large park you have a lot of different entrance ways. So that that's, makes it difficult too. Right. But I think definitely like pathways, like the, the main walking areas. Mm -hmm. I know McAuliffe, they have all the trails. That's where everyone just lets their dogs run loose. And I saw three cars show up that day. So at a park, is your estimation that they should stay in trails and not running around in... I think they need to be leashed, number one. Right. Um, that's a thing where we just have an issue. People just do not leash their dogs. They just think, oh, it'll stay right at my heel, right, but then right. it's 20 feet ahead of them. Because there are some parks that don't have a lot of trails. They just have green space. 
So Correct. And some of the parks, like Colburn Park, it's actually listed as a dog-friendly park. So I think we're kind of giving the wrong idea when it comes to that because it's like, oh, is it a dog park? Are they permitted to run loose? Right. I, the website's very confusing. Yeah. yeah. But, but you think, well, for our purposes, what we should be doing is uh, looking at shortening the leashes to, or making six the leash feet. six feet, no longer six yes. feet. Mm -hmm. And perhaps we can put in a communication to parks right. uh, for signage. And uh, maybe if we start getting more dog parks in our parks. Well, that one seems to be working. Yep. yep. Right? So I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of it. Okay. That gives the so pets a place to go and right. stay out of the other areas where yep. it gets to so be we'll a we'll nuisance. Look in, we'll maybe maybe we can give that an extra little show. We'll look into that. Uh, any questions? Yes, for uh, I'm in favor of the dogs being on a leash, but as far as... Uh, you know, retractable leashes. I, I have a bulldog, a 60-pound bulldog. I, have, I use a retractable leash with them, and uh, you know, you can you can set it any length that you want. I'm not in r real favor of uh, you know just six-foot leashes. Some dogs don't feel comfortable. Some dogs are skittish. They don't feel comfortable on a real short leash. You know, they like to have a little sure. more movement. Mm -hmm. I think the owner should be responsible for uh, you know keeping their dog under control. So. I'm not really in favor of the, you know, a six-foot leash. Cause some some dogs just don't do well on a six-foot leash. Mm -hmm. and what I guess my my <coughs> concern is six feet or less is the guideline in which you can control an animal. It's easier to control an animal within that distance versus 20 feet out, or you know, you, you got to look at the leash length. And I mean, I personally have had retractable leashes. I had a 65-pound lab. Boom! It snapped. It's gone. Bulldogs are a little bit slower. I have a bulldog myself. Um, and, you know, the button breaks on there. You know, if you have a nylon or a leather leash, the chances of that breaking or snapping versus a little tiny thin cable, the Humane Society gets the retractable leashes donated to them, they throw them out because they have had major issues. You can ask anyone there. They're junk. How do you know how long the maximum length of uh, for those? They're all different. Are? They're all different lengths that you can get them. But what they'll go. They'll go out way far. Mm -hmm. To me, how can you control an animal that's that far? Maybe a bulldog that's a little slower. You throw a pit bull on that, or a hyper lab, or all these um, uh, um, shepherd dogs and healers that we're getting from down south. They're high energy dogs. <coughs> well, you know, part you know, I understand what John is saying too. You have a dog, a large dog, in that, but. You know, if you don't put a number on, eventually, you know, you, then it's open to interpretation. So I, I, it's it's tough that way. So we, mm -hmm. you know, we're looking at safety. But let's stick to questions right now. We'll save okay. the discussion for when we get. That's fine. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything right. else then? You have nothing else to add before? I have nothing else to say. Okay. Then. Motion open the floor. Motion open the floor. By uh, Alder Vanderlees, second by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed. The floor is now open. If anybody else would uh, care to speak on this. Mr. Chairman, <coughs> committee members. Name Officer name, name and address, I had please. talked the other day. Name, name and address. address, please. Bob Hero, 611 Wilson Avenue. Yep. And we were discussing length of the leashes to a great extent. And with due respect, you have to consider you're supposed to keep that dog under control at all times. Now, if you let a dog run on a 20-foot leash, you have absolutely no control over that dog. Just to give you an example, I'm working 25 feet off the city sidewalk in the garden area. I had a Springer Spaniel come nosing right up to me. If I would have jumped or startled a dog, I could have got bit, without a doubt. He could have been the calmest, most loving dog in the world, but he is still, like Oliver Beva says, an animal and an animal will react. So that's one of the things we were talking about. And a seven foot leash, I see no problem why they shouldn't restrict that to them. And on, uh, may I approach? Certainly, yes sir. <coughs> and what every pet owner should know, it states right in there that right no there. dog should be allowed to trespass on another person's property. What it says. Okay. Yep. And, and so you're, I'm sorry, was there anything else? Uh, I'm going to touch on the parks too, mm -hmm. but that was already hashed over. But going back to the leashes again, you're saying some dogs have a hard time walking on a leash. It's called training. 
you can train a dog to walk on a five foot leash right alongside you with no problems with it whatsoever. So my recommendation or my uh, to the board would be tighten up the leash law and put some teeth into it. <laughs> so to speak. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're not barking up the wrong tree? Yeah. Uh, question, <laughs> question. Uh, what do you think is six foot as a foot six foot length that's been talked about? Six Talk foot, seven you? foot, you you you've got control on the animal. Where the animal's walking twenty feet away from you, mm -hmm. you have no control on that dog. And if it's like I said, if it's startled for some reason, who's to say the calmest dog in the world is not going to turn around and take a bite out of somebody? Okay, so you'd be willing to go up to seven feet, or would you rather? I mean, would I would rather see six, it stay within the seven six, to six to seven foot six. area. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. I got no other questions. Go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Well, Bob, we were talking about this, and you know, your front yard a little bit shorter, and you said you had that issue. So, um, to your garden, how far is it? It's probably eight feet. Well. From where I was on the on side the of the house that one day, it was probably 15, 20 feet. Okay. Well, your front porch, though, isn't all that far. You know, right. On the sidewalks. So. Right. So that's, that's why we were right. asking about the six foot or seven foot, what you'd prefer. Right. If that was I can give you an example how how inconsiderate some people are. <coughs> there was a gentleman that was walking the springer that I was talking about on a 25 foot leash, and I brought this out to him, and I asked him to read that. He said, nope, nope. He said, you go ahead and keep it. I says, well, you know, we're trying to work to get the leash law enforced a little bit so you get a shorter leash. So he t tightened him up. Okay. He got down to the corner, and as I was watching him, he turned around, looked at me, and pushed the button and let him go again. So they don't care. So you have to get something out there that's going to, like I said, put some teeth into it, make it work. Mm -hmm. Yep. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Okay. Anyone else here for this uh, issue? Motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor by Alder Stoyer. <coughs> Second. Second by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Our clo floor is closed. It's amongst ourselves now, gentlemen. Uh, what do you think? Well, I believe, I believe in the, the leash law, but I'm not real in favor of, you know, six or seven foot length. I think that uh, when a person that owns a, an animal, it's your responsibility to be responsible. And if, if there's people or children around, you should pull your dog in tight to you. And uh, I, I think it's more of a individual <coughs> being responsible for keeping the dog under control in all circumstances. And I think that a lot of the violations we talk about are in the parks where they just let the dog go and boom, you know, the dog is just at free will. I, I think. It, that I'm not in favor of having dogs running in the park, unless it's in the dog park that's you know designated. And, and I, I think we'd be you know do better in, in enforcing the law on, on the dogs that are running loose and people that are not using a leash at all. I think this would be a, a nicer step, and uh, I think we could get the word out you know as far as we have our website known all that on uh, that you know reminder to you know keep your dog you know with under control and what have you. You know we can give those that information out and. Uh, I'm not really in favor of a <coughs> six or seven foot leash, you know. Okay. That's Anything my else comment. Or Anything seven foot. Seven foot. Oh, there's still here? Oh. Thank you, Chair. Um, John, I kind of, you know, follow you a little bit in the sense that, you know, you need, the owners need to be, tr you know, they need to be trustworthy and do that. But like Mr. Harrell mentioned, you know, that one gentleman was responsible for two blocks and then he, changed his mind and let the dog go out so you know if you you know sadly or you know we have ordinances in place that are there because you know some people will honor the law and others won't so we need something in place to kind of talk about that so I I would uh, I, I initially was thinking about a six foot leash but I, I would be comfortable with, with seven foot as well so. I'd like all our Mavis's opinion on that seven you prefer six? You want to stand by six? I mean, well, I just we just want to hear her right, opinion. Right. Most uh, leash lengths are made six feet. If you look the, in the animal industry, it's six feet. Um, I'd be fine if you want to put seven or seven feet or less. That's completely fine. But in the animal world, most people have deemed six feet or less is able to be controlled. Outside of that, it's up for debate. Okay. I'll change my Thank opinion you. to six feet. <laughs> 
Okay. Uh, do I'll I have a motion? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion that it would be six foot. Can we amend our or leash board. law that no leash can exceed six feet? Right. Six feet or less. Hopefully the leash overalls. Yeah. That's and my and motion. The, the, what's on there now, you would be able to cite them. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is there a second? Second. Second by Alder Stevens. Any further discussion? Alder Scannell. Yes, sir. Oh. Question? Yeah, anytime. You can speak up. Yep. Yeah, no, no. More on the enforcement side of this. Um, someone's got a retractable leash. Mm -hmm. How do we envision police officers being able to enforce this law? I, you know, in my mind, I'm picturing someone, you know, chasing around with a tape measure. Um, you know, trying to figure out if they're at seven or seven and a half feet. Yeah, I, I, I'd love to hear. I mean, the law's perspective on on how they anticipate enforcing this. So, I like to be, like I said, um, an Andy versus a Barney, get Mayberry kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, you pick and choose your battles. I'm not looking to hassle this lady who's eighty some years old who has a retractable leash. It's the people that maybe have gobs of rope and retractable leashes with oversized dogs that should not be on them. And they're running around. Um, a lot of times I get witnesses. I get information. I go to our door. Hey, did you see this? Um, a lot of times if I have a witness to something that helps, you know, I suppose I could walk around with a tape measure and, and be like that. Most people admit to their own wrongdoing. So. Yeah. And, and like most I, laws, Officers have some discretion, so get okay, Alder Dorf. Um, Officer Mavis, would it be more complaint driven, like our, like we do with our inspections, um, or would it just be officers kind of noticing? I think the majority of my calls, honestly, are people calling in and complaining because that makes more sense. they've had numerous complaints. They've tried to mediate with the neighbors. They've tried to mediate with that resident. Hey, you know what? We've had no compliance. I've had a door shoved in my face trying to talk to my own neighbor. That's not neighborly. Um, and then finally, they they're just, they're so frustrated. They come to me or to the police department, and they'll call in and like, I need something done. And they have pictures. They have video. Um, that helps me do my job a little bit easier. Then it's evidence right then and there. Like I said, most people carry phones. They take pictures of everything. Video. So. Anything else? Anyone? I would just question whether or not we're legislating the right thing. Um, curious to know others' opinions up there. You know, just I guess has it has it been standard practice of other committees to prohibit retractable leashes? I don't think we'd be getting rid of retractable leashes, but no. we'd be saying your leash can't be longer than six feet. You can't let let it out more than six feet. You would have to lock it in at six feet. Six feet. Because otherwise, those retractable leashes, what's stopping the dog from going up on someone's porch and, and injuring your own, own animal on your own porch? But I don't disagree. And that's, you I mean, know, it's, it's um, the retractable leash that allows the pet to do that. Right. right. So you but can if lock it's them. way out there, it's not so, under yeah. control. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Within reason, six feet, you know, it, you can control it. If it's way up on someone's porch, and let's say that resident opens up their door and this dog wraps its leash around a little three-year-old little boy who's toddling out of the house and the little boy falls down and chips his teeth or that dog bites that child on its own property and that owner is not in control. Those are the cases that I actually get that happen. And like you said, I take it very seriously. And it's like if your dog's up on someone else's <coughs> porch and you're letting it pee all over the bushes and burn the bushes because of the urine, that's not in control. I'm okay, like I said, if you, like I said, the city owns five feet onto the property. So most dogs pee on the edge of the sidewalk and do what they need to do. You know, my own dog, I, like he said, I have a bulldog. I love my, my bulldog. But I have him at my heel. And I have him walking. He'll walk ahead of me, but I don't dare let him pee on someone's bushes, um, go up on someone's porch, or potentially get into it with someone else's animal. Because maybe my dog's okay with it, but maybe that animal isn't. I've had people's own pets shred dogs that are, are walking by because it is an issue and they're not under control. You know, I guess I would have you guys ask yourself, what's under control? Yeah. Something I can manage here or 20 feet out? So. Actually, in here, I got pushed by a 
Okay, the floor's not open, sorry, but <laughs> thanks. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, unless you care to speak, we can open the floor again. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's all right. It just I, get, I cringe when I hear about dogs because I'm afraid of them, though I never was. Yeah. Okay. Now I am. So we have a motion uh, and a second. Uh, any other discussion? From okay. Yeah, I think it's just a tool that helps uh, our officers determine what's under control and out of control. It's just. And again, it'll be up to discretion. So let's let's vote. It should start. It had started already. Okay. So a yes vote is. Yes. Uh, yes. Is right. The motion is to uh, amend the ordinance to require a leash to be six feet or less. <coughs> All right. That saved as passed three to one. And can we uh, add a communication to Parks on uh, uh, signage, signage and uh, where they're standing on uh, dog parks for other parts of the city? Okay. I think that would make a big difference. Yeah, I 100% support it. And refer communication to Parks <coughs> to add signage. Signage. And where there's, I know they had some plans at one time to get more dog parks into city parks. Where so add signage right. to communicate the leash, yes. the leash requirements. Of course, that's both through council. Well, no, yeah. they can give us the communication. Okay. And refer communication to parks to add signage uh, within parks property to communicate the leash law requirements. Yeah. And if they could also report out how where they are with uh, dog parks. And to report to P and W committee. Uh, or to council. To re uh, whatever. To report to P and W committee as to where okay. um, where they are at with additional <coughs> dog parks. Yep. Okay. Yep. Typing as fast as I can. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so we are moving on to the next item. Uh, a discussion and possible action regarding an ordinance creating section 8.16 okay. relating to the practice of massage or body work therapy requiring state licensing. This again was a communication by Alder Stoyer, so let's start with Alder Stoyer. Okay. Well, I, I've mentioned this once before, but a couple years ago my daughter uh, had a class project at Southwest High School and she said, Dad, what are you going to do about human trafficking, and I thought, really? What are you going to talk about that for? And anyhow, one thing led to another, and I called the police, and the police off officer said, we, we have a sting operation going on right now, we gotta have to keep things quiet. So I was kind of in a state of shock, like, really? Green Bay, Wisconsin? So with that being said, I started talking to our law department, um, uh, you know, Attorney Johnson, we talked, and uh, just started, I talked to, uh, Captain Morosky, and we had a number of meetings over time, and we started looking at more and more ways to see what we could do. I think a lot of times with these establishments that are out there, you could look at the legitim legitimacy of these of these places by the fact that they might have a site plan in place, they have state control, if you will, over the, over the workers that work in those places. And I'm thinking if we can do that ahead of time, then our inspection departments will have a better chance of actually looking and following up on things. So it's not so much we're going after people, it's just that if you're um, legal up front, then that'll eliminate some of the issues <coughs> that we're dealing with. So um, uh, Attorney Johnson checked with some other communities and I, <coughs> I think West Dallas might have had an <coughs> ordinance that was really good, and um, I more or less told her to move forward with that, and that's it, where we're at right now. So. Okay, but how does this change? I mean, if there's a, <coughs> an establishment now that is breaking the law, we there are now laws in place to deal with that? I mean, come up there, can I just talk from here? Whatever. <coughs> well, why don't you come up? All right. 
Bill is here from inspection too, if you guys have any questions specifically for him. Okay. So what this does, um, state law already mandates that somebody who's gonna uh, practice massage therapy <coughs> or advertise to be a, a masseuse or a massage therapist, that they have a state license. Um, we, you know, this, the local control isn't there um, because it is state mandated. So with this, we would just basically be adopting um, that state, state statute into local ordinance, requiring that they have a state license. Um, and then that way, you know, our police department could go in and ask to see their, their state license, make sure that everybody who is advertising for uh, massage or who is, you know, calling themselves a massage therapist would have the state license. They're pretty heavily regulated by the state. Um, you know, I have some of the requirements here under Chapter 460 that they have to graduate high school or the equivalent. They have to go to massage therapy school. Um, they have to show that they have malpractice insurance. Um, they have to have ne not have been convicted of, of certain crimes, including prostitution, sexual assault of a child, public fornication, things like that. Um, they have to be trained to use a defib defibrillator. They have to pass um, two exams, I believe. So that's what the state imposes by them. So if, if they have that state license, we're confident, you know, in meeting with, with Captain Moraski and the police department that that would be sufficient for the city as well. Um, we can't regulate them any more than that because that's imposed right. by the state, like I said. So, um, you know, in talking with Bill too, we're confident that that would be an efficient means of regulation. See, that, that's what I'm confused about is that it, the state has it covered, sounds like, so I'm not sure what this does. What? What does this ordinance do to give us more control, more authority, more? Our police department would be able to go in and, and look for those state licenses. They can't now? No, right now they have to oh, have a complaint uh, that's that made to the state. Right. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. And by the police being in there, that'll? Allow inspection. Allow inspections, because right. we work with them all the time. So if they're in there and they see something that is a violation, they'll refer that to us. And we can use that to substantiate. Okay, yep, 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 yep. Like Alderman Story mentioned, I did reach out to several other municipalities. Um, the ones that, that reached back out have something very similar to this. They said it's worked um, like a charm, all gotten rid of a lot of bad operators, um, a lot of bad establishments, so. Okay, any questions for Steph? Nope, thank you. Thanks, thanks for all your work on this. Sure, yep. <coughs> uh, uh, anyone here to speak on this? Okay, we don't need to open the floor. It's amongst I ourselves, I gentlemen. Uh, I make a motion. I motion to approve. <coughs> to approve. Yes. Motion to motion approve. approve. Comment. Uh, I think yes. the state is. Well, why, why, why don't we see if we get a second? Because if it, there's no oh. second, it fails. Okay. Just before we before we make the motion, then I'll just comment. How is that? Okay. Well, before I'll, I'll, we wait. Wait. I'll, I'll ask for more discussion. Okay. So we got we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Alder Stevens. Motion by Alder Stevens. Second by Alder Stevens. Alder. Least. I think the, the state sounds like they have a, a, a good handle on it, and I think if we're just following what the state's, uh, in other words, guidelines, yep. I, I think it'll be covered. And, and there's not too much more than we can do, but uh, we can at least yep. be our participant. Then. Yep, yep. I, I uh, was a little confused. I didn't understand how right. this, uh, that the state had it covered. I didn't realize that that meant that it was uh, under state authority and our, our own police department had no could not go in without cause. So this this makes plenty of sense to me now. I fully support it. And if there's no other discussion, shall we vote? Let's mm -hmm. vote. Let's vote. 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 No, yeah. It should just pop up. It didn't pop up on right? It's not popped up yet. Mine did. Mine did. It's probably good. They've got nothing on there. It's not coming up. Not coming up. Do we need to do it again? Um, I can try and hit cancel vote. Let's try that again. I'm, I'm in the. If not, we can just do I'm voice vote. Not just. Oh, voice. I got mine. No, nothing here. Nothing on there nothing too. On there. Okay. I will. Um, would everybody just like to do a voice vote on this one? And I'll. No, uh, -uh forget it. <laughs> 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 yeah, let's uh, let's do a voice vote. If we got a technical glitch here, yep. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Correct. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next item <coughs> is a notice of change of agent for Van Zeeland Oil Company Incorporated at 601 North Military Avenue. Okay, staff. Law department has no objections. Neither does the police department. 
You concur? I concur. concur. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Van Der Leest. Second. Second by Alder Stevens. Any discussion? <coughs> uh, let us, well, if there's no discussion, I mean, at council, we just voted uh, verbally to make it, does it? I thought, I thought we were always going to have to vote, but it turned out at council, actually, if there was no discussion, mm -hmm. it was okay to just do a verbal vo vote to move things along. Um, what, if, whatever works for you. It, it, we can try it that way. If it, if it works, then we can, mm -hmm. we can certainly try. It's all kind of a work in progress as far as okay. it's going to work. Okay, so that will maybe make things a little quicker. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. All right. Moving on to the next item, notice of change of agent for Sands East Incorporated at 2470 West Mason Street. Staff. Law Department has no objections. No objection. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Steuer. Second by Alder, Va Alder Vanderleest. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. All right. Next item, notice of change of agent for Automobile Gallery Incorporated at 400 South Adams Street. Staff. Law Department has no objections. No objection. Motion, <coughs> Motion approved by Alder Vander Leest. Second by Alder Stevens. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. We're on a roll. We are. Mm -hmm. I think I'm on a hot cross bun. <laughs> All right, next item. Uh, notice of change of agent for Green Bay Lodging to the Meadow Center at 850 Kepler Drive with an effective date of July 1st, 2018. Staff? Law Department has no objections. No objection either. <coughs> Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Van Der Leest. Second. Second by Alder Stevens. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. All right. Next item, consideration with possible action on a request by Catch-22 at 6 1699 East Mason Street to change their liquor license to include an outdoor patio seating area previously held at the April 23, 2018 PNW meeting. The City Council has granted final authority to the Protection and Welfare Committee regarding this request. Staff? Uh, law department uh, has no objections. However, it defers to the police department to obtain any additional information um, uh, to uh, regarding from the licensee regarding the request. Yeah, as mentioned at the last meeting, I would object to uh, an outdoor beer garden for a couple of reasons on, on this place. Uh, um, they open in Mar April, or March, uh, or excuse me, February, March of 2017. Uh, since that time, there's been uh, 21 excuse me, 22 calls for service. Um, nine of the calls for, nine of the 22 calls for service uh, there dealt with the uh, ownership and some internal strife that they were having. So uh, number one, I would like to see the ownership uh, internal strife be set before expanding onto this business. Uh, number two, it's in the middle of a residential area, which I do have a overhead view of Google Maps to show how close in proximity some of the residential houses are. So therefore, I think the calls for service will increase with uh, additional noise complaints coming from these residents. And number three, uh, on April 7th of this past year, uh, the police responded for a uh, noise complaint there already. And when they arrived, they found the uh, external speakers attached to the outside of the building, which is page two of the handout that you just received. Mm -hmm. And in the uh, officer's own words, the uh, music was blurry so loud it was echoing off n neighbor neighborhood uh, businesses and residents already. Um, on April 20th, the uh, community officers went back to cite uh, the bar uh, for violation of a stipulation of having amplified music outside the place. Uh, that was a, a no-no. And when the officer arrived on that day to cite them, they again had the music playing outside. Uh, in addition to that uh, additional violation, uh, he learned that the uh, video recording uh, system uh, was inoperable, uh, which is also a violation of the uh, stipulation. So we have a couple of documented uh, instances of this uh, establishment, 
establishment not following the uh, stipulation that was set forth for it only a year ago, and I think that uh, we need to show um, some cooperation and some uh, uh, follow through with the business before uh, granting them a little ex ex did extension to the business. Right. Did they contact you at all this week? I'm right here. Oh, okay. I'm the owner. All right. You, oh, did, well, we'll, we'll open okay. the floor shortly. Yep. But to answer your question, no, I have not spoken oh, to anyone I since uh, gonna, okay, our, well, our meeting. Uh, yep. Um, and just also to be clear, with the uh, with the agreement, that's not really a violation of law. They can't be cited for that unless they break the law, right? They they can be cited, and maybe the city attorney can speak uh, under better the on ordinances. That. If um, if they do violate a provision of the stipulation agreement or any other agreement that's entered into um, uh, with respect to being granting the license, um, that would be an actionable offense upon which you can seek revocation, suspension, or non-renewal. But can we cite them? For violating the, the stipulation agreement, yes. What was the stipulation agreement that I violated? Okay, well, we'll, we'll open up okay, the floor shortly. shortly. We'll open up shortly. Right. And then you can ask questions. Stipulation. We'll okay. Okay. Yep. You'll have your day. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, one of the questions I had, Captain, was <clears throat> you're saying this music, was this being played at events or was this just a typical evening type of thing? This, uh, I, I don't recall what day it was, but it was a night shift officer that responded at 11.50 uh, p.m. Okay. Uh, and that's when the music was. Violation anyway. Yeah. It was 11.15. Yeah. Uh, but, but we'll keep sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. It's tough. Sorry. It's I know tough. it's hard. <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, I, that, that was my question because, you know, a lot of times we'll have <coughs> special events and there will be stipul stipulations put on them as well. And uh, if you don't follow those, then that's an issue. But if it's just if this was music being played on a typical evening, you know that that opens up a whole different animal, if you will. So okay. that's all I have. Any other questions for staff? Okay. Uh, motion open a floor. Motion open a floor by Alder Stoyer. Second. Second by Alder Stevens. Uh, all in favor? Uh, yeah. Aye. The floor is now open. So please <laughs> step forward. State your name Aye. and address. Aye. Hi, I'm Cindy. Uh, my my address for the bar is 1699 East. Well, your home address. 3681 Pine Grove Road. Okay. Um, I own the bar. I opened April 1st of 2017. Um, I was at the time without coin, like in a huge long, because it's a long story, really long story. I was dating a man. Um, I bought the business. I started the bar for the security purposes of Tom Schleiss. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. I'm sure you are. He's an older man. He felt more secure having a man on the lease. So I agreed to have Jerry's, my boyfriend at the time's name, put on the lease for his security. Jerry does not own my bar. He does not have any part of my bar. However, he went and got a restraining order against me because he was angry with me, cheated on me, doesn't want to be with me. This is what the road he chose. He, with the help of the city, got a restraining order against me on my own business. On February 7th, he shut my business down he boarded up the doors, he put blankets on the windows and completely robbed my business. He stole all of my inventory, my security cameras, my televisions, my POS, um, my computer downstairs, all of my important documents, over $30,000 at least, and shut my business down. And it wasn't until the 23rd, that I, 22nd of February, that I was finally able to get back into my business and reopen it. All of those calls, all of those calls, there were 11, not nine, since February 7th, and all 11 were called by me or by him in regards to something happening, not because my customers are being in danger, but because my business was at jeopardy. He was continuously trying something different. One gentleman came in and tried to assault me. He was arrested, his name is Corey Pagel. I'm assuming he's facing three years in prison due to the fact that he was in prison, had seven, nine more days before he was off paper and chose to come to the of the direction from Jerry to assault me in my bar. And he was arrested and he would finish out the rest of his sentence. The man is crazy and I am not. I'm trying to run a business. I've been open since April 1st. I've never had any issues. I applied for one event. It went by with no problems. There's never been any fighting, no arguing. I do not have drama in my bar besides the drama that came from myself and my boyfriend. And I tried to keep that at the very minimum. So he, now he is no longer associated with the business? He is size? off of the lease. Thankfully, I was, I mean, I'm, I'm thousands and thousands of dollars worth of lawsuits 
I mean, not lawsuits, for my attorney's fee, mm -hmm. to make this happen. And I'm continuously trying to prove my name. I'm a reputable business person. I run a decent bar. I don't allow any problems in my tavern, ever. The only problem that's ever happened since the day I, I've been in this business for 18 years. I know the ins and outs of it. I know what's good and what's bad. And what's good for this business right now, and I really need it, is this patio. I need it for my own personal ability to keep my tavern alive. I'm still going on borrowed money to try to come back from what I've been through. This patio would help me in immense ways. And he's a mason of 30 some years in Green Bay. He is willing to do the work. It's going to be beautiful. He's built over 12 bars already in Green Bay. I've got the perfect guy and, and it's a perfect spot and I will follow all codes and all rules. Well, that, that took care of one of your concerns. One of the, the, the ownership is, is resolved, sounds like. And as far as the music, um, there I did not get a warning of any sort. I was downstairs when this officer came in. My bartender came in and she said, the officer, there's, there's police here. I said, okay, I'll be right up. She said, no, they just said to turn the radio down or turn the stereo down and it's okay. I said, Kylie, did you turn it down? She said, I did. I didn't realize it was that late. It was that, it was that innocent. I said, are they gone? Do I need to come up? She said, nope, they're gone and everything's fine. It wasn't until three weeks later that I received a fine in the mail for $700. And I will go to court on it. Um, that fine says that I broke stipulation. Now the stipulation, my question is, is it noise ordinance or is it the fact that I don't have security? Because the week prior, an officer came in and seen that I didn't have security, thanks to a call from Jerry, because Jerry stole my 21 cameras that I had in my bar. I don't have security, and I didn't have the money until just recently, and I have eight installed, and the two that are important are the front door and the back door, and they're both going and, and recording. I have six more randomly throughout the building. I'm doing what I can to get this business to where it is, and I honestly don't have any idea how I'm doing it. I really don't. But I need this. I need this to stay in business and to stay afloat. I really do. Uh, officer, did you have anything you cared about? No, you had, to, you had a question. Uh, the the, the citation that yeah. you received was for the violation of the stipulation for the amplified music outside. It wasn't for the lack of security. I believe the officer that responded gave you a couple of extra days to get that yeah, line. And, I, and then he didn't come back. We did have it out there. I was in Florida when this happened. Okay. But that was um, what the uh, citation was for, was the... Because uh, it wasn't yeah. clear. I didn't know, because I know that you guys came in originally for the music. <coughs> it was, we were asked to turn it down, which we did. And then I'm not sure why there wasn't a citation written at that time. Why was there a two-week period where there was nothing? I didn't hear nothing. I didn't see nothing. Nobody came to me. Um, this was at 11.15 uh, at night. That's what the ticket said. And at 11, it's 10 o'clock ordinance. All bars have outside stereos. It was just a matter of us not turning it down. We weren't trying to intend. I mean, I've gone personally to my neighbors and talked to them, you know, and told them, hey, this is what's happening. I have a birthday party going on. I mean, I'm very open with that neighborhood. And if anybody sees me, I'm out there sweeping, picking up cigarette butts. I mean, I try to keep it as good as I possibly can. I really, really do. I try very hard to run a good bar. And I think I'm doing an okay job. As far as the noise, I, I mean, I don't, why was there such a lack? Why was there two weeks? What was that two weeks for? Well, we're getting a little off target, but the uh, sure. reason there was a delay, it took a while for the process to filter through. Uh, this, was, this was responded to by a night shift officer that doesn't deal with uh, license stipulations like the community police officers do. So when it, it did become to our attention, uh, that's when we acted on it. So at the time, the officer who was there, who totally understood that it was just a human error, said okay, and he left. And then that paperwork hit somebody else's desk who realized that was a law that was broken and felt the need to write it on. It was the stipulation that was... Okay. Well, I don't have $700, so I'm hoping that it goes my way on June, whatever it is. And I haven't done it since. And it, that was the first time it's ever done. And I thought maybe a verbal yep, one would have been sufficient. Yep. Anything else from staff? I have nothing further. Okay, Oh, Mr. Sawyer. Thank you, Chair. Sure. Okay. Um, did you, you said you have cameras up now. So did you get restitution for any of that other the stuff that was taken? Uh, yeah, there's an insurance claim. I'm hoping that okay. it pans out. But and he's out of the picture. 
As far as I can get them out, yes. There's been a restraining order and a nurse. I've been, it's been three months. February 7th this okay. started. And as far as uh, you said the neighbors, I mean, there, it is, there is some residential area around there, and you mm -hmm. said you know all the neighbors? I do. And they yes. have no issue or problem? No, with you I, right now? no. And in fact, to be completely honest, without sounding mm -hmm. like I'm being this freaked out person, which I have been, I've been a little on edge with all this going on. I'm 99% sure it came from, it's coming out of the speaker. 99% sure that the complaint came from Jerry. I mean, it's, it's, I've been there for a year. It's not, it's whoever's talking. We got a, the speaker. They're having a meeting in the council chambers right now. Is there a way to? To turn that off? I have no idea. <laughs> I can I'm ignore sorry. it if you can. Yeah. I'm fine. But it's being recorded too. Are we being recorded? Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, we are. Every meeting is recorded. Oh, okay. Yeah. You need in the corner. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, okay, yeah. that's all I have right okay, now. Qu questions? Yes, I was going to ask you, ma'am, have you had any violations since you had full authority over the bar since April 1st? Have there been any violations at this time? None, unless I'm referring to something after February 7th that had to do with myself or anybody involved. So when is the first day that you actually took over the bar? Was it April, April 1st? April 1st of 2017. Yeah. And we haven't had any problems, is that correct? Actually, so April 7th was when the uh, law of music complaint that the results of the of A year later. April 1st, 2017 is when I opened. April 7th, 2018, you're referring to the, the law of music. Correct. It was a year, uh, one 7. year. April and it was a year ago? One, one um. year ago, I, I opened on April 1st of 2017. April 7th of 2018, I got this ordinance. That's right, all I've gotten. But uh, when did you take ownership of the, of the bar, just you without your boyfriend? The, the bar, Catch-22 Enterprises LLC is mine. I own the bar, the business, what's inside the business. It's from April 1st, 2017. That's okay. mine. Mm -hmm. But there were issues with your point. Jerry, Jerry was on the lease right. due to the fact that it made right. the, the <coughs> landlord more comfortable. Yep. As of, uh, well, February 7th, he got the restraining order. I was back in business on February 23rd, so I was shut down. So Go ahead. From February 23rd, it's just been you. Uh, well, no, it took me almost a month and a half to convince my Tom to get him off <coughs> my lease. Okay. So as of, I want to say it was but March, he was on the March lease. 1st, he's off the lease. March 1st. So yes. from March 1st, you've been in control. 100%. And from March 1st, there have been no issues? No. Uh, from February 23rd, were there any issues between February 23rd? One with, One with Corey, who is Corey Pago, who is mm -hmm. now looking at three years in prison for okay. assault coming That was the only summer. issue there? Yes. Okay. Does that make? Yep. Okay, that kind of gives us an, a summary of yeah. since you've taken over, you haven't had a lot of problems. No, I, I won't have complaints. problems. Yeah. Okay. All right, I, I have a question. Yep, all those students. Then why is the officer saying there was 22 calls in the last year? Well, there, well, well it's catch-22. There has not been 22 calls. I know that. I did in my research. There's been 11 calls since February 7th. Anything on and above that, I need to know the days and the dates because there was one incident um, between April 1st when I opened and maybe July or August in that first summer that there was a situation and I'm not really sure what it was, but it was there was no citations. I, I don't know. Oh, you said well, there was just going back calls. all the way to the beginning when it was first beginning. opened. But it sounded like a majority of those problems were with the boyfriend. Eleven. And such. That's what it sounded like right. to me. I have a printout of the uh, calls for service since. Uh, so minus the eleven, she's talking about. What are the other eleven calls pertaining to? I actually only have uh, nine calls that involved uh, the ex-boyfriend. It was and nine at the bar, eleven at my home. My apologies. There was eleven calls out in Denmark where we live. Ah, uh, my home. Okay. And nine at my bar. Okay. Yep. Okay. And there should have the only been nine not, calls. The home one, we we got no. Yes. Yes. So yes. nine at the. You're right. Nine here. Okay. Okay. And those were. We got a copy of that, don't we? Or no? We have a copy of that. No. One was burglary. That I made that phone call. That was when he was stealing all my product. Of the remainder, uh, take away the uh, ownership dispute. Of the remainder, there was only uh, uh, three reported uh, calls. Calls that ended up in police reports. There were some police responses that that result in police right. reports. Uh, one of them was a uh, medical EMS. Yep. I'm not quite sure what that was about. A second was a uh, large disturbance on uh, April 1st, 2018. That was our grand opening party, and it was approved through city. And then the third uh, police call was this loud music on April 7th, 2018. Yeah. 
Okay. Well, on the party one, can I ask real quick? I mean, what, well, you, you said it was an there open was, party. So yeah, but there was no police. I was there from the beginning of it. We opened at uh, 7 that morning, and I was there all the way until bar closed. There was there was no police at our, at our grand opening. And what time was the event? Uh, well, it started at noon that day, I believe. This was last, not this last April, but the one before. It started at noon, and it went until like 10, I want to say 10 o'clock. I had a band up until 9.30. That's when they stopped. What you're asking for here was 12 to 6, correct? I mean, your event for this weekend? Uh, this is a permanent. Well, it's permanent. Permanent. Yeah. She wants to extend uh, her liquor license okay. to a garden. Because I'm looking, I'm looking at her agenda here. Maybe. <coughs> no, so uh, this will be a permanent extension of her okay. license to right. include a, gar a beer garden area. Mm -hmm. Through the map of it. Yep. Okay. And aesthetically, I think it, it would only help that corner, to be honest. I mean, I know it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be nice to look at. I already know that. How big is the patio? I'm not, I'm not sure. I want to say it's like just it's ten feet by six by eight by four, and then twice. So the porch, the front porch is here. There will be an opening here to go to the right or to the left, and it'll come out like this, go that way, and it has to angle because there's a water thing over here, and then there's my um, my signage. So we have we're going to angle it and then come back to the bar, to the house, or the bar. Mm -hmm. So it's like ten foot by nine foot by six foot by three foot. In. It will all be closed in on both sides, but open. You know, so they can go out to the sidewalk or to the right, to the right side or to the left, to the left side. They'll probably one side will probably hold maybe three small little wrought iron, wrought iron or whatever, and the other one maybe four. And then there'll be like a rail like this for people to be able to put their drinks on and stand outside. So that's going to be facing uh, East Mason Street. <laughs> yes. So across the street is. Uh, well, Silver Spoon. A restaurant. Yeah, it, they closed. I'm assuming you're planning on having music on that side then too? I have the speakers outside. I may have possibly, I don't know, I don't think I'd have to apply, but I may once in a while on a Sunday have a one man guy out there, you know, strumming music or something for the customers, but well, if you not like city ordinances. You should be. As long as it's before 10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One quick question. So Certainly. when you have a patio, then it's open all the time. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. Right. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Anything else, uh, officer? No. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, motion to close. Well, whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, unless there's something I just else. wanted to make sure. Anybody got any other questions? Oh. I didn't. Okay. I anything else you care to add? Just, uh, I, I, I'll make it right. If you guys approve it, it'll be right. You guys will want to come. I promise. It's going to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I promise. <laughs> I promise. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, motion to close the floor by Elder Stoyer. Second. Second by Alder Vanderly. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, okay, the floor is now closed. <laughs> Amongst ourselves, gentlemen, what do you think? I'd be willing to give her a chance to salvage what she she's had. Sounds like she's had a rough road here, and I'd be willing to give her a second chance and, and see if she can't make it any work in business. I have a suggestion. Yes, sir. So it's going to be East Mason Street, and these folks here, she has music speakers pointing towards the residential area, mm -hmm. remove the music from that side of the building. Fair enough. I'll, I'll do that. that. I'll do that. Because otherwise the other side is East Mason across the street is Silver Spoon. Mm -hmm. It's a restaurant. We'll blast them. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll stay away from residential also. Yep. Okay. Good. I, I would uh, go along with that as well. So. Your motion, Jeff? <coughs> is to motion to, to approve to okay. prove with that stipulation? That stipulation that the speaker is moved away from point that's pointed toward the residences, away from the residences. Right. Okay. Okay. I, I would second that. Uh, Unless you want to second. Does that? Yeah. Alder, uh, motion made by Alder Stevens, seconded by Alder, uh, or I'm sorry, by Alder Van to approve, seconded by Alder Stoyer. Um, I, I think. She's like you, uh, Alder Van Ali said, she's had a rough go. Seems like things are getting straightened out now. Seems like it's, uh, uh, this is going to be important for her business to survive. And I know uh, uh, we are being, um, we are trying to create a vibe in the city with more outdoor cafe type situations, especially downtown, but certainly in other parts of the city. Uh, doesn't seem like there's been too much trouble with the neighbors. Um, so I also. And remember now, this is the final authority. This isn't going to council. This is right. us and done. Mm -hmm. So, 
Shall we vote? Vote has yep. started. It works. Mine's not working yet. No one. <laughs> Mine is now. <laughs> Yours work? Well, I think we've got to push you. I, I can. I, would, how would you like to vote, Alder? Alderman. Vote to approve. To approve. Yes. Okay. The rest of us have turned. Yep. All right. All right. That saved as passed. Or passed. Passed unanimously uh, to approve with the stipulation to have the speakers pointing away from the residential area. Thank you. Make it too. Okay. Take care. Thank you guys. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. Next on our agenda? Next on the agenda is consideration of possible action on a request by Richard Craniums to hold an outdoor event on May 12, 2018, from noon to 6. Staff? Law department refers to the police department. No objection. No objection from the police. This. Just to I'll note, um, the committee does not have final approval mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. on this item um, in reviewing the, the recording that that item that request was not um, indicated um, so in Vanessa Chavez in reviewing said that um, PNW does not have final uh, approval authority however if it is approved by PNW tonight the applicant can still hold the event based on protection welfare um, committee approval police department would not issue citations for holding the event itself Mm -hmm. um, and then council would essentially retroactively approve it, but after the event had actually okay. occurred. Well, that's but I just wanted to make that clear. It's roundabout, but it works. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the effect is the as long same. as the, the police are on, uh, on board. We're on board. We're on board. Just one quick question. Yep. Sure. The, um, how many events have have we had over over time? I don't know. I mean, this they have this every year, don't they? Do you have any records on that? I don't. Well, I don't remember doing this next last year. Uh, I could be well, wrong. Can we ask somebody? Is there, is there anybody here, here for this item? I, oh, we motion open the floor. Well, uh, oh. Come on up. <laughs> motion open the floor by Alder Stoyer. Second. Second by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. 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 The floor is not open. Please state your name and address. Uh, Brandy Hubert, 1764 Linwood. Uh, did you fill out a form to? Yep. Okay, good. All right, thank you. Okay. Yes. Uh, we had an event last year for our anniversary party okay, that we asked okay. for just one day. Um, and this is not the anniversary party, it's a benefit that we're holding for a oh. good customer of ours. So we're just doing, we want to do a cookout and allow people to be outside and kind of hang out. Maybe like a balloon toss to something to raise some money for a fundraiser that she, a procedure that she had for. Oh, well. Mm -hmm. the day, right? 12 to 6? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully it's good weather. Yeah. Where's, your, <laughs> where's your business located then? Uh, 840 South Broadway. 840 South Broadway? Yep. Okay. Any yeah. other questions? Mm -hmm. No. Anything you care to add? No, that's all. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Stoyer. Oh, uh, we have oh, to close the floor. We oh, yes, motion to close the floor. Close the floor. By Alder Stoyer, thank you. We're so okay. close. Second by Alder Stevens. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 The floor is now closed it amongst ourselves. Alder Stoyer. Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Stoyer. Second by Alder Vanderleest. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Tough oh, one. but should we have voted? I, I just did it as a vote, right. so that's fine. Well, that's a tough habit to break. Yes. <laughs> we'll be fine. Next item. One minute. Okay, no, just when you're ready. Next item. Consideration with possible action on an appeal by Lissa Root to the denial of her operator license application. Staff. Uh, law department recommends denial of this appeal uh, based on a felony conviction that substantially relates to the license activity. Uh, the appellant also has a number of other violations that also substantially relate. And I did provide um, the committee members a denial one only kind of list. All the applicable. Yep. I'll, I'll go into that in a minute. Uh, anything else? No, for the same reasons that the city attorney mentioned, uh, I would recommend denial as well. Okay, now for the new members, I do want to explain what's going on here. When, when someone applies for a license and they have a felony on the record, no matter when that felony was, there's a state statute. Did anyone get a copy of that? Okay, that states uh, they, cannot, they cannot have a uh, such license. 
Um, so that's why staff automatically denies. But they can appeal it because the statute is so written that there is some room for interpretation. It says how uh, uh, they're, they're denied as it relates to the offense. So uh, often we look at the time difference between when the offense was and the application and if it's considerable time there's been no incidences in between we've been often said well that no longer relates that's a common interpretation many of us applied uh, in the past um, I know uh, there was uh, licenses uh, granted where uh, he had uh, the applicant here and they had their preacher here and they had others vouching for him but then Turned out they were ended up selling cocaine from an uh, ice cream cart. <laughs> I wasn't part of that one, but I've heard about that one. Uh, I have been a part of one where we granted a driver's license that uh, uh, that they then um, the company uh, changed up how they did background searches and they go a little deeper and they ended up taking that person's license. So, and I have also voted uh, myself personally to deny a license because I didn't think there was enough time between. It was, the applicant was very young. And to the best of my knowledge, I was outvoted. And to the best of my knowledge, there never was a problem. So, I mean, it really, <coughs> there's room for flexibility. Uh, it comes to a lot of, you know, I just want to give you some background information of, of things that have happened and how we've been operating. And uh, you're on your own now. Okay. Anything, yeah. anything I can do to help, you know, feel free to ask me. All right, let us proceed. Um, is there anybody here for this item? Motion open the floor. Motion open the floor by Elder Stoyer, second by Alder Van Least. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, the floor is now open. Please come up and state your name and address. I am Melissa Rudd. I live at 822 Pine Street, apartment 23. And I know, I'm telling I know I've screwed up. I've known that it's been about seven years. I've had revocation hearings. I've successfully completed probation. Um, since then, I've had two children. I mean, I want to be one of those films that shows that they can also improve their life instead of just having it always set me back because it's it has set me back. It set me back from where I can live, what I can do, and I mean, it's my first job in almost ten years, and I love it. I love my customers. I love working. I enjoy going to work. I like actually doing the right thing for once. And I mean, I it really sucked that I lost my job. I really what? <laughs> I mean. I would just, I've improved my life so much since then. And I just really hope I could have the opportunity to just keep going on and just keep going forward with my life instead of having all these setbacks that keep coming with being filed. Because it really sucks. And I really wish I could take it back. <laughs> um, your employer, is he uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so that's always good to get, have the boss up. <laughs> no, I'm mean, uh, not. State your name and address. Uh, my name is Tanya Hopp, and I live at 2970 Mossy Oak Circle. Um, I am her employer. Um, I gave her the opportunity. You know, I hired her. She's my third shift worker. She sells liquor, and not liquor, but beer from 10 to midnight, two hours a night. She leaves at 6 in the morning. She has a two-hour span where she has to sell beer. And I hired her, gave her the chance. She did the same spiel. She has. She's, she comes to work. She's dependable. She works hard. She's great with the customers. Everybody likes her. We all like her. I mean, that's why I'm here to vouch for her. I mean, I don't want to lose her. You know, give her a break. She's trying to do the right thing by, you know, how there's so many felons that can't get jobs. Like our company is one that does not, we don't hire felons because we know that they can't get a liquor license. I went to bat for her. I said, come on, let's give this girl a chance. You know, we'll put the application and see if she gets approved. She got denied. I went to my employee, my boss, and I said, I'm gonna bat, and he said, go for it. You know, we we enjoy her. I mean, she comes to work, she's, she's never been late, she never called in. She's always there. And she does her job, fine. I mean, I have no issues with her. And she communicates with me, and I'm just going to go to bat for her because she's only got a two-hour span where she has to sell it from 10 to midnight, and then she locks the beer coolers up. Uh, so she's been working with you how long? Um, she's been almost, almost two months. Yeah, almost two months she's been there. No issues, no problems. Her cash drawers are great. Okay. I've had no complaints, nothing. So I just don't want to lose, lose her because she is, a, you know, give, give her girl a chance. I mean, she's turning her life around. She's, you know, she had kids. She made a mistake, and she was very upfront when I hired her about everything you know didn't lie about anything just told me this is what she did and this is where she's at and she's having a hard time finding a job because she's a convicted felon and it's tough but 
you know. I would probably even still keep her if she didn't have a liquor license. I would change my shift around and have her come in at midnight until 8 in the morning when we start selling beer. I just don't want to lose her. But it makes my schedule a little easier when I have someone there at 10 o'clock at night. So, you know, I just, she deserves a chance. She really does. But I mean, you do realize that if we grant her this license, she can sell liquor anywhere at any time. I mean, that's, I I she doesn't want to work anyplace. Right, right. right. I understand that, but I mean, because that has also happened right. where we they grant take her away. license yes. in a certain, yeah. in a certain way. I'm totally familiar with it. Yeah. So, I mean, I've, just, I've actually done all the So we're all service. on the same page. Yeah. I've done all safe services. She takes all her classes. She did everything yep. she's supposed to do. Passed with flying colors. She actually was faster than some of the people that have been there longer that didn't take them. She was on top of it, and she just really wants the job, and I really want to keep her. So, question for the chairman here: mm -hmm. uh, If we grant her a license, is it for a one-year period? No, that's for good, isn't it? No, no. they do expire. No, yeah. oh, okay. they, they, they do, and they have to renew it. Yeah, they got to renew. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Do so I think hers would expire She'll in June of 2019 if she was issued in October. Oh, one approved. Yeah. Is that yeah. a yearly? Is it a yearly? It's yeah. like a probation. Yeah, it's like, well, it's like a year. So anybody who's issued one from, I think it was the April to June, it's like expires in June of, two th of 2019. Mm -hmm. So like I have girls that are up for renewal in May. So theirs will be good till June of 2019 if they're renewed. Mm -hmm. It's a year. And then they, they punch it and you come back in and you apply again and they renew it. Can we put a stipulation on that? No. Like, no. That has been Just for against uh, uh, legal advice that stipulations are uh, impossible to enforce. Sticky wicket. And they can't um, contradict or be um, stricter than what state statutes provide. Yeah, we tried to wiggle out that way. No wiggle room that way. Any questions for the applicant? Just one quick or question. Or the, uh, yes. Thank you for coming in, Lisa. Um, I just I noticed on your various uh, misdemeanors and such that you've spent time and you've, you've taken care of all of your obligations. Well, successfully complete probation with all of what my PO at the time right. wanted to recommend I for IOP, be everything done, flying colors. I mean, I know it was a stupid mistake I made. I was 21. I regret it, and I see how much it can set me back in life, and I just want to just be one of those serious convicted felons that can show that they can improve their life. That they're getting a whole job. Yeah. Right. I have a okay. question. That's it. Thank you. Yep. All the Stevens. So your record here goes all the way to 2014. What happened in 2014 to current? I was in a revocation hearing. Um, my soon-to-be ex-husband actually, um, he has, he actually threw a knife at me a couple months ago and is supposed to be in jail if he's not. Um, he was a very bad influence on my life. He um, was selling drugs and my PO got wind of it and she arrested me. I was actually pregnant with my daughter and I said, spent my whole entire second trimester in jail. And ever since then, I just, I don't want anything to do with that kind of lifestyle. Those people are horrible people, they're bad influence and they did nothing good to my life. I'm divorced from my husband who I really, honestly, I can't regret marrying him because I wouldn't have got my daughters, but he was just, he was horrible. And no matter how much I tried to make him stop, I know I still have to take responsibility for it, which I do. But it's, I don't want to be that kind of person that's just the typical felon. Oh, you're a felon, you can't get a job, you can't do this, you can't do that. I just, I want to change and I have been changing. It's taken me a long time to change and I've been, a, I'm, I'm not even that person anymore. I don't even know who that person was. I was stupid and young and I, was in love with someone who was pretty much a monster and I just did whatever he wanted me to do and it was it was a horrible time. So you're not on probation now? No, nope, I actually got off probation I think in 2014. Yep. I haven't been in trouble years. since, not even a speeding ticket. <laughs> She's very straightforward. She <laughs> <laughs> told it lays on the table. Yeah. Any other questions? Anything either of you care to add? I think we said it all. Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Right. Motion to close the floor. Motion to close the floor by Alder Sawyer. Second. Second by Alder Stevens. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, okay, the floor is now closed. Your thoughts, gentlemen? I would be willing to. It's a one, it's a, basically the license is in effect until June of next year. Or June of this year? June of 2019. She yeah. I would be in favor of granting it to her because she's, I think, making a real effort and no violations as far as police. And, uh, 
Let's try to yep. And that would be my motion to okay. grant her the license. Motion by Alder uh, Vanderleest and Second. seconded by Alder Stevens to grant the appeal. Anything? I concur. You concur? I think I concur too. <laughs> we got a vote. We need to vote. Well, nothing showing up on Alder Vanderleest's. Uh, what? Alder, yes, would be your vote. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. That passed unanimously. Thank you so Thank much, you, so you much. guys. Thanks. Good luck. Yep. <laughs> um, next on our agenda. Yes. One moment. Yep, when you're ready. Okay, next item. Consideration with possible action for a Class A liquor <coughs> license by Van Zeeland Oil Company uh, at 601 North Military Avenue for the 2018-2019 year they currently have a class a beverage license and six and one that's military and mason mm. i'm just trying to buy a no a bond bond is it a marathon or something it's a gas I'm station sorry, there. It's a marathon gas station i think yeah. it's a marathon i'm not sure what it is yeah i yes. think well, like I've Fox. gassed up my mother's car there i'm pretty sure it's a marathon it's across from anyway. family video yeah yeah across from family video yep Okay. Your neck of the woods. Yeah, it is. It's actually my district. Yeah. Um, well, go ahead. I'm well, staff. Law department has no objections. I concur. <laughs> I love to concur. Motion to approve. Motion to approve, Viola Vanderleest. Second. Second, Viola Stoyer. Any discussion? Okay, then there's no discussion, so we'll do a verbal roll call. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously. Next item, the renewal applications for liquor and or beer licenses for the 2018-2019 license year. The law department has no objections. And uh, there was one uh, location that changed their uh, licensing slightly. That, that will well, that'll be, be coming that, up. Yep, that will be on item number... Yeah, this, these are ones without any changes. Oh, right, sorry. these are no changes. And I do have actually right. something about one that is changing. Okay. They called me. They don't want the changes. So we'd make that change. If, if someone accidentally filled out their report wrong, their license wrong, then they made changes and they don't actually want changes. They want to... Mm -hmm. same as, we can take care of that then or not now? We can take care of that. Night, yeah. Right. I, I can but when we, when we get to it, right. when we get to it with the mm -hmm. others, yes. Okay, so. No objection. No objection. <coughs> Motion to approve. Motion to approve by Alder Stoyer. Second by Alder Stevens. Any discussion? Okie dokie. This will be a, a verbal vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. All right. Next item is renewal applications for liquor and or beer licenses for the 2018-2019 license year pending the approval of change of agent at the May 15, 2018 city council meeting. Uh, Law department has no objection. I have no objections either. Okay, there is one. Uh, it was called by the Haystack Bar and, Haystack Bar and Grill at 1911 University Avenue. That I'm sorry, that may be for item number 13, if that's a change of description. These are change of agents. So these agents oh, change, I'm sorry, I did so jump these the gun. agents were all approved in the previous items yep, uh, that, earlier yep, in yep. the agenda. So, yep. And now we're just we're, we're approving right, this is, the renewal license yep. with the approved change right. of agent. So. Yeah, I got kicked out. But uh, I need this. Oh, come on now, don't be this way. <laughs> All right. I'm joining the meeting again. No, I, I'm in. All right. Uh, should we do this voice forward, or would you prefer? We still need a motion, but we can. Motion to approve. 
motion to approve. By Alder Steuer. Second. Second by Alder Stevens. Would you prefer that this one was done with a? It, it's entirely up to you. Well, it's, well, it's, there's no discussion. There's no discussion. Mind me working. All right. Voice vote. Voice, voice vote. All in favor? All right. Aye. Opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously. All right. Next item. Renewal applications for liquor and or beer licenses for pending. the 2018-2019 license year pending the approval of the change of description. Yes. Now with this one. Yes. The Haystack Bar and Grill at 1911 University Avenue would like their description to be as it was in 2016-17, just bar and restaurant. Yep. I believe that was one that police department did have some additional questions as they were trying to include the parking lot. Um, yeah, they, so that, that was the only item that we wanted right. to do. The owner had help filling that out and uh, there was mistakes made or things that he's, he's fine with uh, the old description. And with that change, I have no objection to it. Okay. <coughs> Motion to approve. Second. Motion approved by Alder Vanderlees, second by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, uh, yeah, yeah aye. we're going to do a voice. We're going to do a voice because Alder Vanderlees doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So I uh, opposed. That passes unanimously. Okay, one moment. Ay, 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 ay. Okay, next item. Consideration on a request by former Alder uh, person Moore regarding domestic violence as it pertains to bail, bond, sentencing, and victim resources as previ previously discussed at the January 29th. 2018 meeting. Yeah, I read the uh, minutes from that and it mm -hmm. sounded like staff was going to uh, have yes, a report I for us. have that prepared. So this communication was submitted a few months back by former Alder uh, Moore and at this committee's initial review of the matter I did share with the committee um, that the legal authority over domestic violence offenses including sentencing and uh, bail setting uh, rests exclusively under um, state statutes. Um, and further, a representative at that meeting from Golden House did speak um, to uh, as to the victim resources that are currently available to residents in the Green Bay community and shared information on the help and services that their organization offers. Uh, during the committee's discussions, Alderman Galvin uh, shared that he had come across some information regarding a program that another municipality had implemented in the surrender of weapons from domestic violence offenders and requested that law department look into this issue further. Um, so accordingly, I am reporting on what I have been able to find out. Uh, this program that Alderman Galvin mentioned is the Seattle King County Task Force created by the City of Seattle and King County in Washington State. Uh, Washington State law has provisions that require a domestic um, abuser to surrender, to surrender weapons to law enforcement pursuant to a domestic violence protection order issued by the court. Uh, this regional joint task force uh, was created between the city and the county. Um, it's made up of prosecutors, law enforcement, and staff with a budget of $1 million. Um, and their goal is to follow up on all such court orders that are issued in civil domestic violence protection orders and confiscate weapons subject to the surrender under the protection ordered by the court. In addition, the officers in the task force do follow up with the alleged abusers uh, after domestic violence incidents have occurred and attempt to get them to voluntarily surrender weapons before any injunctions are issued. Uh, under Wisconsin state law, uh, there is also a similar provision that allows domestic violence victims to obtain these domestic abuse restraining orders and injunctions uh, against their alleged abusers and that under such an order, uh, the alleged abuser is also required to surrender any firearms that they may own or possess to the sheriff uh, of the county in which the abuser resides. So in our um, scenario, it would be to, to Brown, um, Brown County Sheriff's Office. Under Wisconsin statute section 813.12, this is a civil injunction that can be brought by a victim uh, in circuit court. Our police department has had some uh, discussions with the Brown County Sheriff's Office to see 
what they currently do with respect to these weapon surrenders and DVO injunction and protection orders. Per the Brown County Sheriff's Office, they do currently take weapons ordered to be surrendered under uh, WISTAT 813.12 for domestic abuse restraining orders and injunctions. Uh, in addition, they also confiscate weapons pursuant to criminal orders to surrender as well. Um, however, there is no ded dedicated task force to this end. Uh, in theory, a task force like uh, the one in Seattle and King County could be created between the city and, and the county, however, based on current county and municipal officer and budget resources, that is not something that could, um, could be currently pursued at this time. Um, lastly, I wanted to touch on a newly implemented program that the police department has employed, um, and per uh, perhaps Captain, Lo uh, Captain Florence will be able to, to give a little bit more information about it as well. Uh, the program is called the Maryland Lethality Assessment. Uh, the program has been designed for law enforcement first responders uh, to ask victims 11 questions based on research factors associated with lethality. Uh, certain responses trigger the protocol referral, which is an immediate connection with a local advocacy program and victim resources. Uh, by utilizing this tool, the police department will better uh, be able to uh, better link victims to advocates and victim resources engage them in the criminal and legal process, and also in turn put them in touch with the resources to help them pursue the DVO injunctions uh, under 813.12 uh, allowed under our state statutes. Okay. But right now the city cannot confiscate. No, that, that authority so, is delegated to the, the Brown County, County Sheriff's Office, okay. which is it's the same structure as in, as, as in Washington State. However, okay. they've created a joint task force right. um, so that Municipal officers can help them, um, but it's the sheriff's office is still the lead agency because the the statute is delegates the authority to, to the county sheriff. Okay, and any uh, information on the Maryland? How long has that been going on? Or that, that just started uh, uh, this past spring with all of our officers being trained in that process. Uh, so past two months, and uh, to the state, uh, it seems to be working well. There have been no complaints at all. Questions? Would we make a motion then uh, to receive in place on file? I believe so, mm -hmm. yes. <coughs> motion to receive in place on file by Alder Vandalis. Second. Second by Alder Stevens. Um, do we want to, uh, it's not within the budgetary process now, but do we want to in the future look at creating, see if we can create such a uh, unit? Would the police department be interested in such a uh, sounds like a pricey endeavor, but uh, where I came from, and, um, we had a, a huge and very robust system for doing that, um, where we would go, uh, anytime someone had domestic violence, we'd go to them, confiscate all their weapons, we'd do follows to make sure that they didn't sing with people that were having mental health issues. So, uh, but it was expensive and it took a, a lot of personnel and it took a lot of time. Was that just the LAPD on their own, or did they have the? Were they working with the county? LA? Um, on the domestic violence side, it was on, the, on their own, and on the uh, mental health side, it was with the county. Okay. Well, we could maybe mm -hmm. look at it further down the road and uh, make a decision further down the road if when it's when. Um, what kind of time frame would we need to put on that to look at this again as a possibility? If there's budgetary funds. It would have to be before we start our budgetary discussions in July. In July. So what's, what's the amount that you might well, we, we, we don't know. We, we, we don't, don't know. know. Yeah, we'd have to start. Uh, perhaps what we should do now is uh, can we put in a communication to the county? Does, do we, is there a, a process to communicate with the county? Uh, reach out to them to see if they're interested in such a... I meet with them tomorrow at uh, 1030. So okay, how about uh, if the chief of police could could uh, meet with the counterpart and discuss this and report back to us on, on how the county feels about this and the viability and possibility of going forward with this? Sure. Okay. Can I ask one question? Certainly. How is the county performing as far as, uh, has there been any complaints with the county as far as the job that they're doing? Do we have that info? They, they, per they, they perform it based on the court order and that's how they uh, but that's the only way they do it through court order. So in other words, it's handled through the state uh, with the court order and everything. Correct. And, and, and I take it that they are following up 
with, with they, they, they will region. follow up. However, it's a very tedious uh, process to track down the people, not to mention the weapons, and okay. make sure you're getting all the, the weapons, not to mention storage and transportation and everything. Okay. Yeah. So, Sir Sheriff Gossie, Gossie is, in other words, he's doing do his duty there. Then. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, we had a motion. motion to receive and place on file, seconded, and all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that passes unanimously. Okay, next item. Consideration of possible action on a request by Alder Weary of an endorsement of Police Chief, Smith, Police Chief Smith's proposal for school safety regarding retired policemen in all Green Bay public schools. Well, I noticed uh, Alder Weary is not here, but the Chief is, so let's hear from the Chief. Thank you. I'm very weary of that. May I approach, Your Honor, I have mm -hmm. a uh, group of... Uh, By all means. So this is a long and tedious thing to read. Jared Nebraska did a lot of work on this, so um, I think if I could do it, have us all a favor, I'll distill this down into a, a quick presentation to tell you a little bit about... Yeah? Oh, you want me to just make it? <laughs> it's a third dog. Third dog. Perhaps. Okay. Perhaps. Back to back. Yep. You can. Cost you a nickel. <laughs> 35 cents a page. Bill us. Um, I believe this started when uh, Mr. Wary attended a meeting the other night, which we had at the school. We had two meetings at the school to discuss with the parents or concerned citizens or elected leaders um, what their concerns were with school safety, what they thought of about this proposal that I put together in light of the uh, Lakeland, Florida shootings. So let me, I'm sorry, Parkland, Florida. So let me reel you back a little bit to the day after the shootings that we had where 17 kids were killed over in Florida. Um, that, as typically happens when we have an incident like that, I send all our officers out to the different schools. I happen to go to one of our local elementary schools for the beginning of school to assure the kids, to make, let them know that we're concerned about them, we're keeping an eye on everything. And I had a conversation in the parking lot with the principal about what it would take to keep that elementary school where my two kids go safe. And uh, as the discussion evolved, uh, I thought there were a lot of things that are, we're doing and that we can do to make it safe but I think there was one piece missing and that's my proposal here. Um, first of all, there's environmental design, making sure the school is designed safely so you can keep bad people out or at least delay them from coming in. There's different things you can do with door locks, with, uh, with secure locks in other areas around school, with making sure that the, anybody that wants to come in has to go through the principal's office, things of that nature. The school's doing that. In fact, a lot of school uh, renovation is occurring this summer and some of that's gonna happen. Um, Alice training, which is where we train uh, all the teachers on how to react properly to these shootings, closing the doors, um, you know, run, hide, fight, that type of thing. Um, that has been done in almost all the, or in, in all the schools, as far as I understand, and uh, I'm really happy that we've done that. First responder training. As you know, we provided our officers with helmets. We now give them rifles. We now give them ballistic vests that'll stop a rifle round. My expectations and my insistence is that if there's an active shooter at a school or another situation, we're not gonna do like we did in law enforcement just a few years ago where we wait for more troops to come and then we all go in together. My expectation and our training is that the first guy there puts on the helmet, grabs the rifle, puts on the vest, and goes in and takes care of business. So um, our officers know that, they've been trained in that. Our school resource officers, of which we have 11, have all been trained in that even as recently as just a couple weeks ago to make sure that everybody's up to speed on that. We also need to do as much as we can to provide the counseling and the guidance and the, the support for the schools, including a mechanism for children to report threats. As we saw in Florida, uh, many reports were made Many times people told about this Nicholas Cruz, we knew he was a bad guy, we knew he was violent, we knew if he came on campus something bad was gonna happen, and uh, there were many, multiple failures of law enforcement, it appears, and as a result, we had the tragedy in, in, uh, in Florida. So, talking to the principal that day, with the kids filing in, I felt perfectly safe that that school was safe. I was standing there in uniform, I had a rifle in my car, I was, I had my vest on, I was ready to go, I had the right mindset, I think, to protect that school. And then as we had our conversation and I came back and talked to some of my staff who, with years of experience on the SWAT team and whatnot about what it would take to really protect our schools, the idea I had was that we need someone in that school 
that is there for school security, for school protection. I think an armed police officer or former police officer, of which we have many, um, who has demonstrated with 25 or 30 years that they can work with a weapon, that they have the right orientation, that they've been responsible with that weapon, and they've been uh, the kind of person that would um, take the appropriate action if something occurred. And I started thinking about Green Bay in particular. We have a lot of cops here that retire at 53, 55, 57, who have a tremendous amount of background and tremendous amount of training, tremendous amount of experience, and who would who have even approached me to take jobs like this. Um, a lot of cops will work after their career is over so that they can afford the health insurance. If we were to provide them a fair wage and health insurance, I think you'd have dozens of people that have called me or said they want to do it. And what would that cop look like? What would a retired guy that would be highly qualified look like that could stand in that school for the price of $25 an hour from the start of school to the end of school and be there to make sure that those kids are safe? I would say it looked just like Brad Florence. 30-year guy, getting ready to retire. Um, SWAT commander, decades of experience, decades of experience as a SWAT commander probably tens of thousands of hours in training in uh, crisis, critical situations, comfortable on all the different shooting platforms, um, proven to respond in the right direction when, uh, when, when gunfire happens or, or something like that happens. Now, the caveat to this whole thing is Andrew Smith doesn't get to decide. It's obviously the school board that gets to decide. And it's obviously the people of Green Bay that get to decide. The other problem with this is it's very expensive. Um, to have an officer in every school, and the question I got, uh, I saw you a CC an e email from you, um, what would it cost to put an officer in every th of the 38 schools in the city of Green Bay, um, this is discounting the 11 officers that we have right now, so not counting those, vicinity, $2.7 million for the first year, which would include the officers and the equipment and some training that we would have them. Um, that's a huge bill. That's a huge number. I recognize that. Um, but it's... 1% of the school board's school district's budget. Um, and if I would, I challenge people to say if they were, if they had kids at Columbine or Sandy Hook or Parkland, Florida school, if they could go back in time, what would be the one thing they'd want? Would they want cameras in their school? Would they want more counselors? Would they want bigger uh, or smaller class sizes? Or would they want an armed first responder trained ready to go, that can handle that threat at the threshold of the door and not wait and hope that uh, the cops are there in time. We have a great response time in our city. I'll use an example that I used in a couple things. This is the, uh, the incident we had over at Lambeau. Call came out as an active shooter. Our cops rush over there just like I expect them to do. Craig Bray, first guy on scene, gets, in his, gets his gear and goes in. This guy was in custody and handcuffs on the ground in four minutes and 57 seconds which is a fantastic number. I think any chief across the country would be proud of that number. Um, and the guys did it right, no one was hurt, he's in custody. But what if that had been an active shooter at a school and somebody breaches that front door at a school and has four minutes and 57 seconds to shoot as many bullets as they can at as many kids as they can with nobody there to stop them. I have my guys doing extra patrols at schools. We're lucky enough to have 11 school resource officers in school, but there's 38 schools and there are schools that are going without that, that, that layer of protection that I think is critical. So in a nutshell, that's the proposition that I had. Um, it's expensive. Uh, I think we could find enough people. I've gotten calls from around the state of people. Hey, I'm a retired chief from so-and-so, or I did 30 years in the military over here, or whatever, um, and they, that would be interested in doing it. Um, some of the guys that are recently retired stopped me in the parking lot and said, hey, I'll do that. I think that'd be a great job. Every day that the school is open, there's the officer standing at the front door. I'd say in soft clothes, my idea is dress like you. White shirt, jacket, weapons hidden, but everybody knows he's there and he's ready to go. Um, let's face it, the biggest effect, I think, is the deterrent effect. I think these cowards that do this to our children um, are afraid of a police officer standing there, afraid that they won't be able to wreak their carnage um, on the on the schools there so I think it's the, the, the deterrent effect is probably one of the most important things and I see this officer standing at the front of the school greeting the kids as they go by with fist bumps and high fives and how are you officer good to have you here 
They take a tour around the school and make sure that everything's locked up and like it's supposed to be. They're ready to respond in a, in a true emergency situation. Not a kid smoking in the bathroom or a, you know somebody mouthing off to a teacher, but a crisis situation, somebody trying to get on that campus that doesn't belong, or a violent uh, event inside of the school. The rest of the time, they're near the front door where they can respond quickly. They can look and see who's trying to come in, see if it's a legitimate person or someone who doesn't belong in, and um, keep that bad guys from coming in our school. So in a nutshell, that you get 57 pages of that, um, but that's kind of a distilled down to the nuts and bolts of what my proposal is. Right now, I don't think there's a ton of support among the folks in the school board. You know, they've got other priorities and they certainly have budgetary considerations that I don't have when it comes to spending other people's money. So that's kind of where we're at. It's a quick question for you, sir, Chief. Sir. Uh, what about the state and the federal government? Have they aired any money coming our way for this type of thing? The state has uh, earmarked $100,000. Um, I don't believe that money's gonna go towards an armed person in the school. That's gonna go- Environmental. Environmental, distributed amongst those schools, especially among those schools that don't have anything right now. <coughs> Excuse me, but if I could, I did a quick uh, internet search of some of the headlines. And uh, these are the headlines in the past couple of months. Tennessee lawmakers consider armed off-duty officers for schools. Maryland, race to push armed officer in every school. Staten Island, New York, politicians urging de Blasio to uh, armed officer in every school. And by the way, the price for that's a little over a billion dollars in the city of New York. South Carolina, same thing. <laughs> Kentucky, same thing. Sarasota, Florida, same thing. I think people realize that, you know, I'm not the only one in the world who thinks this is a, the only viable alternative. And I ask you to look at a courthouse or you look at the uh, airports and places like that, clearly or certainly, you know, the safety of our kids is, uh, is it's at least worth consideration. Will the officer be there the entire day? School my day? my idea is the officer there is there from before school starts, so they can watch everybody that's coming in until after the bell rings and the kids leave. And if I was doing it, I'd be at the front door as every kid files in, and I'd be at the front door as every kid leaves the school that day. And once they were in the school and the parking lot was clearing, then I would say they're done. Look at it, it's it's 180 day 180 day school years. What we basically have here, I think, somewhere in that right. vicinity, every Christmas off, every Thanksgiving off, summers off. Um, I think it would be a fantastic job for a police officer. I picked the $25 because a lot of our off-duty jobs pay $25. And I know at the Ross down the street from my house, they're paying 16 for entry-level people. So I think that's a that would be a fair amount. So this is during the school day, pretty much. Uh, after events, Correct. games and such, that's, that's well, the way it goes. That might be, uh, you know, yeah, and that might be something else to consider. Right now, we a lot of schools hire off-duty police officers on an overtime basis after these events or on a off-duty basis for these dances, football games, things of that nature. But again, you know, I get it, and I get your, your concerns. It's an it's a expensive proposition, um, you know, and, uh, and this, that true measure of school security isn't going to come cheap. But um, as a parent, if it meant writing a check for, I think we figured 140 bucks per student per year, I'd write that check today if I knew it was going to work, and I knew it was, was going to go towards having one of these folks in our school. And so the officers would have no other duties than sort of pretty, I mean, so uh, like police liaisons. Right. The police liaison would still be doing their work. It'd be, it, there would be that separation. Right. So I don't anticipate these officers would be worrying about truants, Truth, as right. I mentioned, or kids smoking in the parking lot. Right. Or if some kid runs out of school, that's not their concern. Their concern is bad guys trying to come into the school. And wouldn't it be comforting for parents to know that, uh, you know, uh, the same feeling I had when I drove away from that school that day, I had this sinking feeling in my stomach that I wasn't there to protect these kids. I wasn't there and no one was there. You know, God bless the teachers. They are great. And the principal and the, and the other folks that work in the school, hardworking people, they came on the job to, to teach kids. They want to they wanna help young minds grow. Cops, we come on the job to stop bad guys from doing bad things. Then uh, you mentioned the budget is going to be expensive. Would that be coming out of the city's budget or the or the so Green Bay school, Schools budget? School yeah, I would imagine. Uh, you know, and, and I've thought about this a million times. It, my obviously the school budget was where it would default to. But if the city would uh, say, "Hey, we'd be willing to you know supplement it or pay for part of it or what or 
or something along those lines. I don't know of any federal money that's available. I know the DOJ has a bunch of grants that are available. And even if we couldn't do all 38 schools, boy, it sure be great to put a, a school security officer in those schools that don't have a school resource officer, right? Mm -hmm. And maybe we could get the school resource officer to focus more on the defense of the school and less on the truancy and misbehavior and, and the other issues that they, uh, they deal with now, taking crime reports and whatnot. Okay. So the communication leads with uh, possible action, the request to endorse Police Chief Smith's proposal. Uh, but the endorsement, so all we'd be doing was voting that we support <coughs> the school district hiring retired officers. Basically, and it would seem like it, you know, um, just like me making the suggestion. It, my suggestions don't have real teeth. It's just right. a suggestion. Mm -hmm. It's based on my having been in a hundred schools a thousand times. Um, what I think and, and what my staff thinks is what's needed to make sure our schools are truly secure. But uh, again, we don't get to decide. The school board gets to ultimately decide, decide. and um, that's a decision they get to make. Right. So, but we would be basically saying to the school board, we would support this if you want it. And if they wanted it, they could maybe talk to us about possible ways of making it happen, and we could negotiate, and it would either happen or fall apart there. So we're really just, we're not Let's putting our foot too far out. Right. We're basically saying, yes, we think this, uh, if the school district's interested, we support it, or we don't like the idea, period, is basically what it comes down to, I think. And I'm sure Chief Smith's, I mean, your people put a, a lot of work into this, and I, I would like to read it over yeah. as well. We could hold this item if I'll still be We could, we could hold it. Why don't we hold it and, and have a little more discussion? And I maybe, mean, uh, maybe we could get a school board person to come by and, uh, you know, get some information from them and see where their, see where their direction is. Maybe we could well, we're, uh, we're about put, safety a too, believe me. put a communication so. out to the school board uh, and have them come and talk to our committee. Yeah. See where they're at. Why don't we yep. do that? I'd or like at least send us a letter or something if they, you know. Would you be comfortable with that? Sure. I mean, that we can read this over? No, I, I think it's good for discussion, you know, mm -hmm. and even if it ultimately doesn't come to fruition, the, the fact that we're at least considering it and, and giving it some serious consideration and talking about it, um, I think it's a great discussion to have. Um, and if, you know, I, I think we need to do what's right for the city of Green Bay. This isn't for Krivitz or, you know, Wasaki mm -hmm. or Milwaukee or Madison. This is what I think is right for the city of Green Bay, the sky size school we have. But we need to remember, you know, no one thought Columbine, Colorado was going to uh, Columbine uh, in Colorado was going to happen. Nobody thought Sandy Hook was going to happen. You know, you don't know where these are going to happen. And and I think every school is vulnerable, not just in Green Bay, but across the country. And we see people ramping up their protection because we really know that um, our kids are vulnerable. We need to do everything we can to protect them. Well, I appreciate your interest in this. Yeah. I appreciate your work in this. And uh, I'll take a motion to hold and put it forth to the communication to the Green Bay School Board if they could uh, weigh in on their feelings on this and make it known to us one way or another. Would you like that communication to come uh, from the police department or what, what staff department would you like to have reach out, I guess, to the school board? Who do you want to Just for clarification, they are still compiling the, from the meeting we had last week, they're still compiling their data about what parents wanted and uh, what people that attended those meetings wanted. I'm not sure when the date they're going to have that ready on the school board's website. But they said they'd publish it on the website. <coughs> Excuse me, would it make sense to wait until well, that we'll information gets days. completed? Wait till they have something? I mean, what, what do you think that would be? Hard to say. Probably 30, they probably have it within 30 days, but I could uh, stay in contact with you if that works. Wait and till they. Okay, and session. you're in contact already with the. Right, the, the so I think wait through, to hear from through the police department then. Uh, your your contacts with and, and, and uh, um, discussions with the Green Bay School Board if uh, uh, part of that includes their you know this, I imagine you can share this with them I have already shared that with them and, uh, and get their reaction and that then you can report that back to us so we'll hold this for 30 days so I think so. it's gonna be long enough I think so, so could be I hope so and we can always hold it again from that if, if necessary so or, want to go 29 days? <laughs> 30 days.
Motion. Sir? John made the motion. Motion for motion by Alder Van Lees. Mm -hmm. Second. Seconded by Second. Alder Stevens. Yes, well, yes, let's do the vote for it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> that motion carries. Thanks, Chief. Thanks for uh, listening. I really nope. appreciate it. I'm okay. glad you guys took up at least a few minutes to uh, hear what the proposal was and give patient. it some consideration. Yeah. You didn't have to put me 15, but I still don't know we got information. <laughs> information. Yep. Thanks. We'll still have a few more items later. This is yours, I believe. Or is it mine? I got one at home, but I saw this being All right. Our next item is just for informational purposes is the liquor violation reports from the police department for May 7, 2018. And there are no violations reported. Wow! We are really rolling here. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's really good. Motion Man. Motion to receive and place on file. Motion to receive and place on file by Elder Stoyer. Second. Second by Elder Van der Least. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I guess that's unanimous. One minute. Were you a teacher? We have a lag in the system. Okay, there we go. That was a motion by Elder Stoyer. Second by Elder Van der Least. Receive and place on the file. All right. We're all set to adjourn then. We are. Yes. Motion to adjourn. Set. Motion to adjourn by Alder Stoyer. Second. Second by Alder Stevens. All in favor? Aye, 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 aye. We are adjourned. Thank you, gentlemen. This was fun, huh? Uh, a little bit different. <laughs> a little bit different tonight, yeah. but I think we did all right. I think we did all right, too. Well done. So with this, you know, sometimes we worry about letting it burn too much. So you just turn it off. Just up here, it up here, here, just here. Turn. That turns it off. Okay, all right. Power off. All right. Beautiful. One more time. Now again. This is broke. <laughs> it's already going. Eh? All right. Thanks, Captain.